Hello brothers and sisters, it's Brother Dorsal. Today I want to be talking about Christ died for sinners. That is the heart of God. Christ dying for the ungodly. Everyone's ungodly. Everyone in Adam are sinners. And the wages of sin is death. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no not one. There is none that doeth good. There is none that understandeth, and there is none that seeketh after God. That is the judgment on man. The thoughts of his heart are only evil continually. But God already knew that and took that into account. This is why God the Father sent his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die for the sins of the entire world. John 3.16, the most popular verse in the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is life without end. And that life is in Christ. And when you believe that gospel message, the death, burial, resurrection, Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You have received the forgiveness of sins. The, the sins that are passed through the forbearance of God, cleansing you and justifying you by your simple faith. What we find how a man is justified in the sight of God is Romans 4, 5. To him that, to him that works not, but believes on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness, even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without work, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. That is a done deal. God imputing his righteousness unto you. The moment you believe that gospel, God's record concerning his son, that he came by water and by blood, the water, the virgin birth, the blood, that he is the atonement for sin. He is the propitiation. And I'm, I want to pull out this verse that just really draws this out, the reality of what Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, God in the flesh, did for mankind and how easy he made salvation because we had no hope. We couldn't merit everlasting life. There's no man that is worthy for the kingdom. But God opened the way. He is the door. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes unto the Father but through him. I'm going to turn over to Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth demonstration, demonstrating, his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also join God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. That atonement is the blood of Christ, which has put, been put to our account by our faith, believing that Jesus, Jesus Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father and raised for our, just, uh, for our offenses and raised for our justification. This is all true. This is what reality, well, this is reality. It's not just some man that died on the cross. No, this is what happened. It's history, but it is what actually occurred 2,000 year ago, years ago. Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, the only begotten Son of God, died for your sins on that cross, was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. It is an event that actually occurred. Not a myth, not a tale, but actual reality. 
and he died for sinners. People who hate God. People who are his enemies. Everyone. No one is good. Their religion wants to say, no, well, you have good in you and you can make that good good enough for you to merit everlasting life. That is denying that the blood of Christ is enough to cleanse you. Because if we seek to be justified by Christ, we are also found sinners. If we seek to be justified by Christ, we have to know we're sinners. Because <laughs> why would you need a savior if you didn't know why you needed saving to begin with? That's why the law was there to condemn us, to show that we are not law keepers, but law breakers. And that by sin, death came by sin to condemnation. We were condemned, unworthy, unprofitable, nothing good dwelling in our flesh. But God sent his only begotten son. And I'm going to read verse 10 again. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. That is a done deal. When we've been reconciled to God by the death of his cross, Jesus Christ, we are saved forever. We have received everlasting life. And when we believe that gospel message, you can know you have eternal life because you have believed in the name of the Son of God. That is a promise from a God that cannot lie. Jesus Christ promised, in no wise will I cast you out. And no man can pluck thee out of the Father out of the Father's hands, not even yourself. It's impossible. You're not stronger than God. God is stronger than you, and he lives inside of you. This is the God of the universe, the God who created the heavens and the earth, died for you. He'd rather die than live without you. And he made a way. It's as a free gift to be received. All we're asked to do is believe he did it for us. It's such a beautiful message that never gets old. And this is what God's speaking to us every single day. And um, those that, just another clarification, repent and believe the gospel. What does repentance mean? Biblical de definition of repentance. The Greek word, it comes from the Greek word metanoia. What is metanoia? Change of mind. Meta, change, noia, mind. What are you changing your mind from? unbelief in the gospel of Jesus Christ to belief in the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's it. it is, there's no such thing as repentance of sin, turning from your sins, because that's a work, and works don't save you. It is by grace through faith, and faith is not a work. That's where we get through Romans 4, 5. Repentance is just is the same coin of believing. The same way I believe the sky is blue, Okay, let, let's just draw out this example. I believe the sky was orange at one point. And someone told me, you know the sky is blue, right? And I look at it again. Oh, okay, it's blue. I repented. I changed my mind from my previous belief to my now belief. The same way if I was an atheist, I believe there was no God to me believing the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. You have repented because you have changed your mind and you believed it. It is all faith. And it's all grace through faith because grace is unmerited favor. We did not earn this free gift of, e of e everlasting life, which is in Jesus Christ. And it's that easy. You can know you have eternal life. You can have assurance that you're saved and, know, and that can never change because you have been forgiven of all your sins. That is it all, brothers and sisters. I hope you all have a God-blessed day. Just know God is for you. God loves you. And God is working er everything out for your benefit. And he's only trying to share his grace and mercy to you every single day. God bless.